In this tutorial, I am going to talk about task cancellation process. Task cancellation is a really important topic when it comes to task parallel library. In this tutorial, we'll talk about soft failure, canonical recommended version of task cancellation process. We'll learn how to get notified about task cancellation process. And at the end, we'll learn about composite cancellation token. In this tutorial, I will show you everything in practice using Windows Forms. Why Windows Forms? Because it is a UI application. I'm not going to show you the things from the console application perspective. It is really easy to do it in console application, but when it comes to UI applications, it is a little bit tricky. So we'll talk also about synchronization context to make sure that it is possible for us to send data from the worker thread to our main thread. Let's first discuss what we are going to do. Right now we have Windows Form application. So you see we have the only UI elements like start, cancel and reach text box. There is no functionality for these components right now. And we have FTP server. We are going to download some files from FTP server. I'll use um, public FTP server. So this is our public FTP server. This is a URL, username and password. Using these credentials, we'll be able to connect to FTP server and download files to our local computer. Okay. This is the main purpose of using this application. When we click the start button, this will schedule a special task and using the cancel button, it should be possible for us to cancel a task. Okay. So let's use, let's first try to start our development task factory, start new. You can use task run if you want to dive into details of new task, task factory, start new and task run to understand which one to use. Just check my, uh, uh, TPL tutorial to learn more. Right now I will use task factory start new. You can use task run. It doesn't matter. And we need FTP client. I will use third part library called Fluent FTP. This is a really cool library that allows you to interact with FTP server to download, upload, to do additional operations. You can do everything with your FTP server using this library. Okay. So first let's try to FTP client. Let's try to instantiate our FTP server. Server FTP client. Okay. For the FTP client, we need to provide a username, password, and the URL. Let's just copy this information. Of course, I'm not going to write better code here. The purpose is just to learn cancellation uh, for the tasks. And at the end, you can refactor, of course, this application for FTP client. Let's just automatically connect. Cool. And what I want to do, I want to FTP client dot get listing. For the listing, we should specify the remote path. We have the pub example. Let's go for it. So we have pub example we are going to download files from here so let's get this files this is going to be ftp list item ftp list item then file item i'll just interact with files so this is a file item for me to interact with files only we need to check if type is file. Okay, cool. And if it is, then we should store our download process. Okay, so download file for the download file, we should specify first of our local path then the remote path. So for the remote path, I will use file item full name to provide the full path for the local one. I will use C files FTP and the exact file name here. Cool. Now we have all the required information to download the file. Let's do a little bit formatting. Okay, cool. And what else right now? When we run this application, it should be possible for us to download files. Let's just check it. Let's run and start. 
let's go to the FTP. Let's refresh. So you see it is downloading. So everything is working without any issue. That's cool. Let's just refresh and let's remove all of them because we haven't implemented cancellation mechanism yet. For the cancellation mechanism, we are going to use cancellation token source. The cancellation token source, cancellation token source, new cancellation token source. And from the cancellation token source, it is possible for us to extract cancellation token. Okay, our token. Okay, let's extract it. So the cancellation token source, let's let me explain the relation between cancellation token source and cancellation token. Cancellation token source is a wrapper over your token. And this provides additional information like canceling, cancel after, etc. There are a lot of functionalities in our cancellation token source. And you may think about it like a decorator over your token. Okay. Cool. And for the task factory stored new for the second argument, we uh, have requirement to provide cancellation token. So I provided this cancellation token. I'm using Lambda expression here and we have captured variables mechanism that makes us uh, available to use this token directly inside the um, delegate without providing it, but I'm providing it to make everything clear. Okay. And if our token is requested to be canceled, then let's just break. Okay. This is our soft failure. And this is not a recommended way of canceling a task. But for now, let's just learn how to do a soft failure. Right now we have the breaking mechanism. So the last thing we need to do actually to provide cancel method from the cancel button this is our cancel button and when we cancel when we ask cancellation token source to cancel the token this token will be notified that uh, operation needs to be canceled and the break should work okay let me just run this application again let's start let's refresh yes everything is okay let's cancel and after downloading some files so you see the task is cancelled we don't have logging mechanism i will not use the advanced logging techniques here i have provided the rich text box here to log some information so the purpose here is from the task somehow to notify our UI, special our rich text box to um, log some information. Okay, let me just um, open it. Somehow it is not properly working in Visual Studio. Cool. Okay. And we have rich text box here. Let's go for it. And inside task factory stored, I am going to use rich text box, which will fail. And uh, let's see why it fails. Okay. Let me just type the reach text box, append text, and download the sorting. This should fail. The problem here is rich text box was created in our UI thread. This is our UI thread resource. This is really important. So if you want to access from background, from the worker thread to your UI thread resources, it is not possible directly calling them. Let me run this application and you will see that cross thread operation will happen. Let's just run it and it should throw exception and notify that cross thread operation not valid. Yes. Cool. Let's try to handle this situation. If you are using UI applications like Windows Forms, WPF applications, we have the UI thread element here and for the ui thread when you create some resources in your ui thread they are not accessible in another thread same is applicable for worker threads also for example if you create a some resource in your worker thread it is not possible to access it from the ui thread or another threads and for that reason in our ui we have synchronization context okay this is our synchronization context let's get it for context 
This is our synchronization context. And what is synchronization context? Synchronization context is a special bridge between your UI and worker threads, okay? And this is my UI thread channel. Okay, let's call it channel or bridge. It doesn't matter, you can call it channel bridge, okay? This is a special bridge which allows your worker threads to push some data to your UI to handle it. Okay, cool. Let's call it. And for the context, we have methods like post, send right now. Both are okay for me. So I will use the um, uh, log data. We have special delegate called send or, send or post call back. And the state here is going to be my message, okay? I'm just providing this message to be handled by a rich text box in a UI thread. Okay, let's generate this log data. Uh, generate this log data, cool. Now we are able to get this message, this information from our state variable. And let's just call our rich text box, append text. Okay, and let's just provide our oops state dot to string and n for the new line call. Now let's just uh, oh, preparing to download and the exact file name. Let's do a little bit more understandable logging file item dot name and let's copy this and below let's paste um, download has been completed for the given file and when you cancel your task we should notify our UI also cancellation requested. Requested. Cool. And let's, of course, try to log the FTP connection. Connection to FTP server was successfully done. Okay. And now let's run our application. Oops, let's check the issue. Okay, two, 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 two. So where is our cancellation token? Of course, yeah, this context here. Let's paste it here. And of course, you need to reach out to your synchronization context outside of your task. Let's run it. Let's start. So we need to get some messages, of course, cool. Let's cancel, cancellation requested. This is how we are interacting with cancellation and synchronization context. The problem here is we are using soft failure. So let's do it a more advanced. So let's throw the operation canceled exception. This is a better way of canceling. This is a canonical recommended way of canceling a task. Okay, let's just format them. And let's run our application again. Let's go to the FTP server first. Let's remove all these files. Cool, let's open our file start. And let's wait for it. Okay, cool. Cancel and it should throw exception. Yep. That's how we are implementing the um, proper task cancellation process. And of course, for the task is canceled requested and operation canceled exception, we have two in one and it is called throw if cancellation requested okay so throw if cancellation requested the combination of is cancellation requested with operation cancelled exception so you see that throws operation cancelled exception i think for the logging purpose it is better to use token is cancellation requested if you need some additional logic inside your if log if mechanism okay cool 
There are multiple ways of notifying user about the token cancellation and one of them is going to be our token.register method. It has multiple overload versions and one of them is just an action. So you can use any um, mechanism you want to notify you for your user and I will use messagebox.show and let's just call cancellation requested. To not throw an exception, I'm going to use break here. You can use a return, doesn't matter. Let's run it and see if we are able to notify our user about the cancellation process. Let's start, cancel, and that's all. Task is canceled. Cool. Let's restore our recommended version of cancellation. Let's remove this one. And the last thing here is to know about the cancellation. It is possible for us to provide multiple reasons to cancel a task. This is really important. So the token here, the one token means you have one reason to cancel a task. It means, for example, when user clicks a cancel, this should cancel our task. But depending from your situations, you may have multiple cancellation tokens that refer to your task. And if one of them cancels your operation, your operation should be canceled. Okay. If one of the tokens will call cancel, it means the task should be canceled. Okay. Let's create our cancellation token sources. For that reason, I am going to create three cancellation tokens. This is our cancellation token one, two, three. Okay. And what I want to do, I just want to create cancellation token source dot create linked token source. Okay. This is our linked token source and I will provide cancellation token source one token for the second token and for the third token here. It means now we have one cancellation token source that can assist from three cancellation token. Okay. War cancellation token source. And for this cancellation token source, I'm getting the token, providing this token to my function and that's all. And any of these tokens will throw an exception. Let's check it. I'm, I just want, for example, to test cancellation token source one cancel. Let's run it. Let's start. Cancel. Cool. Task is canceled. Let's use cancellation token source two to cancel our task. Start cancel. Yes, it is also working. So you see it is possible for you to have multiple reasons to cancel a task. Let's say one is your user, user wants to cancel a task. The second one is your business case. Depending from your business case, business arguments, you may need to cancel a task. There may be no need to continue this task depending from your business requirements. So it is possible for you to have multiple reasons to cancel a task and cancellation token sources create linked token source will help you to handle this case.